Hi there and welcome to another Code Zonk video. I've got my iPad open and I'm actually pretty excited about what I'm going to show you today. This is an app called CargoBot and it's along the lines of some of the other apps that I've shown you where it's uh, really sort of aiming to teach kids some of the programming concepts so they can have an idea of how some of these uh, specific programming constructs work before they actually start writing code. I'm just going to go right ahead and jump into this app. Okay, again, it's called CargoBot, and one of the things that you should note is that this app was actually made entirely on the iPad, and they mention that here. If you look at the bottom of the screen here, it tells you that it was made with something called uh, Kodia, which I, I hope I'm pronouncing correct, and you've got a link here on how was this game created. I'll go ahead and I'll tap on that. And it actually does say that CargoBot is the first game to ever be programmed entirely on the iPad. It was uh, created using Kodia, a touch-based coding tool for rapidly expressing your ideas. It's available in the App Store. It doesn't cost anything. At least I don't think it costs anything. I'll have to go back and check that. But uh, that's something that you can actually go to the App Store right now and take a look at. And if you are so inclined, start actually making apps directly here on your iPad. Now that's going to go, of course, beyond the scope of what we do on this particular channel. What we'll do today is we'll just walk you through some of the tutorials on CargoBot. I started to look through it, and it's pretty neat stuff. Let's go ahead and begin. I'll just go ahead and tap on the screen. And what we'll do is we'll start on the tutorials. And we'll start at the very beginning. I'll start with Cargo 101. Okay, let's go ahead and begin. So what it's going to have me do is it's going to have me program this claw that actually grabs these crates and moves them. So it's giving me hints here to start. So I'll do exactly what it's telling me to do. Let's drag it over here where it's telling me to put it, and then we'll press the play button. And you see it just very easily grabs that crate. Your program is finished, it tells me. You can go ahead and press stop. So I'll press that. Now it's having me move this next item to program one. Drop it here. We'll move this item over here. And then we'll press play. So really, really what it's doing is it's sort of walking us through what we can expect to do in these tutorials. Okay? And then uh, you get uh, awarded stars based on your performance, and then you can move on. So we'll go ahead and click on next. All right, we're going to try it ourselves. We're going to move the crate further as shown above. So the little window here above is what our objective is, and then we've got our play field below. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's see what we need to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to grab our item. We need to move over one, two, three spaces. So I'll put one, two, and three of those items there. And then I will move down to complete my task. Press play. And we got it. So we earned three stars. Let's go ahead and continue. All right. Now it's going to introduce us to the concept of loops. And in some of my previous videos, you've seen this in some of the other apps that we've, that we've looked at. And this one is no different. We're going to create a loop. It says to first go ahead and drag prog1 to the prog1 line. So we'll do that. You can also move around commands, pick it up from here and move it. Drop it here. Now we can drop this onto prog1 as it's describing to us and press play. Right, so all it's doing is it's in a continuous loop now. So it's just gonna keep on doing that until we stop it. So it's telling us, okay, great. Now we're, now we're actually invoking a loop. Now we have to try to solve this level using a loop. So let's do that. So we know that we need to go down. We need to grab. Then we need to move over. We need to move down. And then we need to move back. And that's really the extent of our loop. So let me try that and see if that completes our task. All right, so far so good. All right, we did it. So let's go ahead and move on. Okay, we're gonna use progs to make our solutions shorter. Shorter programs are awarded more stars. So this is where it starts to get a little bit tricky. You know, and you can look at what they're doing here and it doesn't always give you a sense of precisely what it is that you need to do. The other thing that I'm not 100% sure of is, is it only executing what exists in prog1 as my main program? Do I need to worry about defining my loops in prog2, 3, or 4? So there's questions here that aren't immediately evident, but we'll see if we can go ahead and work it out. One of the things that we can do is we can just go ahead and press play and see what happens. Let's do that. Okay, so the first thing that we do if we hit play is it says to us, you know what? Start doing some moving. 
So that kind of gives us an indication that what it wants us to do is it actually wants us to make sure that we treat prog1 as our main program. Yeah, it's walking us through all this time. So each time prog2 is executed, its entire sequence is executed. So press play to see how it works, and then try to solve this level using prog2. All right, let's press play and see what it does. Okay, so it's actually stacking everything over on the next column. So that's fine. So that gives us a hint. Let's do this. Let's say, move these over a little bit. We know that we want to, when we pick up this block, we want to move over one, two, three, four, five spaces before we move down. So let's say, let's put in our five spaces and then move down. And then what we can do is we can include another series of items that says once we get to that point, let's move back one, two, three, four, five spaces. So we'll do that. And then what we can do is we can say, go ahead and execute prog three at the end of prog two. Let me get rid of these. So when I take a look at that, it suggests to me that it's going to pick up just two crates because I've got prog2 twice in prog1. Prog1 meaning our main program. Let me go ahead and try this and see what this does. We know that we have more work to do because we have to account for all four crates. Exactly. So we'll throw in two more prog2s to complete. All right, we're on our second crate. Heading over for our third. Then we've got our fourth. Okay, so we completed the task, but we completed the task earning only one star. That means that you could probably go back and do this a little bit better. You might be able to make this a little bit of a tighter program. Let's go ahead and move on to the next level. Okay, now we're using conditionals. Now I suspect that what it's gonna do is pretty much walk us through this so that we have a better understanding of how this works. But what we have to do is we have to drag that gold block onto the right arrow in prog1, and it'll only execute if the claw is holding a yellow crate. So we'll follow their instructions. Now it says drag none onto the left arrow in prog1, and it will only execute if the claw is holding no crate. So we'll put that here. This is the single step button. Press it to execute a single instruction. So we'll do that. Okay. We see what's going on here. Every time I press it, it executes a single step of the, of the program. Okay. I think I understand what we're doing. Let's get through this and see if we can get to the next exercise. All right, that's it. The last thing that we need to do is we need to understand that the clear button will completely clear out our program so that we can start over. I'll press that clear button and we'll say clear. And that tutorial is now over. So let's move on and see what we've got next. Let's do one more before we close this video. Let's see. So we've got this stack of crates. We've got four blue ones. We have one orange one. Orange or yellow, however you're looking at it. We need to make sure that all the blues are stacked in the middle, and we need to make sure that the yellow is stacked at the end. So here's what we'll do. We know that we are going to need to at least go down to pick up a crate. And then we know that sometimes we'll need to move right and go down, and then other times we'll need to go right two times and then go down and on the on the occasions where we have to go right once and then go down we need to go back once and on the occasions where we need to go right twice we need to go 
back or left two times. So let's take a look. We know that we've got uh, conditionals that we have to account for here. So on PROG2, we're going to say, if we have a blue crate, we want to move over once, down once, and then back home one time. So we'll say, go ahead and invoke PROG3, but only do that if it is a blue block that we're working with. Otherwise, invoke PROG4 if we're working with the one gold or yellow block. Now, PROG2 represents our looping construct. We know that we've got five blocks here, so let's go ahead and say, let's execute PROG2 five times. Okay, and with that in place, I'll go ahead and press that play button. And so far, it looks like it's working. We're just working with the blue ones at this point. All right, and it looks like that worked. But just like the last time, we only earned one star, and that suggests that we can go back into this and tighten this up a little bit, make this a little bit better. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and close that video up from here. I highly recommend this app. This is really terrific stuff. So if you get a chance, go ahead and check the video descriptions. I'll have a link to this app in the iTunes store. I'm using it on the iPad. I will certainly research and see if it is available for the Android device as well. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see all of you in the next one.